folks, in this episode today, we're showing you an easy way to make your own bacon right at home. It's going to save you time, it's going to save you money, and there ain't no artificial ingredients. Okay. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by for another episode of Cowboy Cooking and whoo we I think maybe so you can see some smoke drifting there in the background. What are we talking about, folks? Home cured bacon. Uh-huh. And if you're a new viewer right now, before we go any further, reach up there and hit that subscribe button and the dingy dong bell because I don't want you to miss out on none of this stuff that we have going on from grilling to Dutch oven cooking to Dutch oven care in the house outside down by the river all around the world what we're going to do even a happy dance I mean it is a great day above the grass and we're so glad to have you each and every one Hey, and before we go any further, hey, it is 2020. The cookbook comes out March 17th. That's Shan's Day. That's St. Patrick's Day for the little Irish girl. You see her back there? I can see her. She sure is cute. Aww. And what is it? Big book tour all around. Let me see, can I name the cities and see if I have studied? You see this here is, is a really pretty piece of hog meat, also called what? Anybody know? You, last row down by the corner in the pecan tree. Yep, that is right pork belly. So when you go looking for one of these, you're not just going in there to the grocery store and saying, hey, I need some bacon. I'm going to cook my own. No, no, you want a pork belly. Now, I can remember growing up, I was fortunate enough to be around them old timers on the coldest day of the year. What would happen? A lot of y'all know it was hog killing day. I mean, people would be bringing hogs from everywhere. They put up the, the hams, they put up the bacon, they cured it all. As an old man once told me, Son, we use everything, even the squeal, when we get through with them, you'll know it's in there. Folks, I wanted to bring back them flavors, the flavor and the aroma of that bacon that I could smell in that old smokehouse. And hey, it was either dry, salt cured, or smoke cured where I come from. And I sure do prefer the smoke method more than I do the salt, just salt dry cured. Cause salt, sure, it brings all the moisture out and we're gonna mix a marinade that has some salt in it, but I really like this smoke cured and making our own Hey, it's going to last, hey, if you freeze it, four to six months. I ain't never had a piece of bacon last that long in my life. Duke and the Beagle can go through this slab and maybe two meals. But this is a quicker way, an easier way. We're bringing out all them delicious flavors that you need to know. And they ain't no artificial ingredients here, folks. We're just making it quick, simple, and mm, oh so good. Now, there's all kinds of curing methods that you could find. You can look at them on that Google deal and it'll take you to a bunch of them. And a lot of them are gonna tell you, you're gonna need this pink nitrate powder. Well, folks, that's for long preserve curing and I ain't for sure what's all in that. You know what them old timers used a lot down there when I was little? I'd hear them put it in there. I'd hear them say, somebody bring the celery salt. You know what celery salt has in it, folks? It has some nitrate powders in it, so hey, I didn't put none in it because it ain't gonna last that long here. I ain't near afraid of it, I promise. But let's let's talk about pork belly and where does it come from? Yeah, I'm talking like right here. Both these little sides, not, not getting up in the ribs, but the belly that wraps around here. And them good hogs, I mean, mm. Now, when you get these, they gonna have a big old layer of fat on the bottom side of this, but even more than what that is. And they're skin on and skin off. Now back there and during hog killing days when they'd take that skin and peel it off her, how many people know what it was for, huh? I'm talking homemade cracklings. They just cut them, throw them in that old hot lard over, dip them things out. Mm, they was good eating. But I trimmed this one, even the fat. I got it, it is a skinless. It doesn't have any skin on it and you can order them both ways. I just went ahead and got this without the skin or the rind as I call it. And then I just trimmed it out. Now, if you want to leave a little more fat than I did, sure, you can do that. I'm okay with that. But I like my bacon a little leaner. I'm sort of watching my figure and got to be looking good all the time. So I trimmed it really good. Whew, we're going to make us some marinade to put on there and let this little piece of hog set for three days. So we got kosher salt, and then we got some applesauce, some brown sugar, and I like me some maple syrup. Uh-huh. I mean, not a whole bunch, but I'm going to put me some in there. Coarse ground black pepper. Don't think you can use that other stuff. I don't want you to. I want you to get the big coarse ground black pepper. Two tablespoons of Red River Ranch Mesquite seasoning with that ancho chili powder in there. If you ain't got it, hey, 
I will tell you, you can use salt, pepper, smoked paprika, and some dried ancho chili powder and mix that in there as well. Now, when you get all this stuff in there, and it's going to be ooey gooey, thick and sticky, add you about a half cup of warm water in there. Stir that really well. Got it on that flat baking sheet. Just pour half of it over the top. Take you a spatula, or if you got some gloves on, just rub it in everywhere. Turn it over, pour the other half on there. Seal it up good, set it in an ice box. Now, we're going to stay three days in there. But after the first day and a half, I want you to go out there, turn this meat over, and make sure that both sides are equally laying in the love. That's what we're going to do. Now, folks, at the end of that three days, when you bring that bacon out of that ice box, get it in there on the counter, I want you to go ahead and what? Rinse all that stuff off there with some warm water. Now, I'm not talking about scrubbing it. I'm just giving it a good rinsing. Now, you say, why are you getting rid of all that flavor, Kent? Well, folks, you try to leave that on there. Now, sure, it would work just fine if we were like that pork belly video we did where we were smoking and curing the whole pork belly till it's plumb done. But no, this is bacon. We leave that on there, and then we go to curing it out, and then we try to fry that bacon with all that sweetness that have stayed on there and caramelized to that. When we cook it longer, it's going to be burnt. Get you a wire rack, put it back on that baking sheet, lay your bacon on top of there, and let it set 45 minutes till it warms up and then we'll bring it out here and slap it on some smoke. Took me about two really big handfuls of mesquite hardwood lump. Set it on the far end of this grill, let it get good and white, added me about five or six pieces of good chunky apple wood. Now, we're gonna to try to run this at about 170 degrees internal temp, and that's when we're gonna pull it. Now, let's, when we mention this mesquite wood and apple wood, now, I have had hickory and apple or just straight hickory but to me folks when you've got some bacon in there and i want to draw some more flavor to it more than anything else i want a fruit wood in there i've used some apricot i've used some peach but you can start out with any other hardwood beside that or you can just do solely fruit wood i ain't got no problem with that so whatever you want to do but just make sure you combine them both wait till your hardwood lump or whatever wood you're using is good and hot then put your fruit wood on there because we don't want to use it up right at the first. We want it to last during the duration to let that smoke just love all the way around that piece of hog meat. Well, we got our old hasty bake fired up here we do. And you seen me, remember now, put all them coals to one end. That's where we're keeping them. And it don't take much because, folks, we're trying to get that temperature to where the internal is 170. So it ain't going to take a whole lot to do that. Outside temperature today, about 45. So we have got us some smoke woo, rolling in there today. And all the fire is on this end down here. So I'm gonna set this piece of hog meat right there on this end. Got our hog on there and I even heard him, what, what is it? Yeah, I heard him squeal right there at the last. So just like that old timer said, we got all of it in there. Now, takes about anywhere from, like I say, two to three hours to get that internal temperature up there, and we'll put a probe in from down there on one end, usually the thickest one. So just keep an eye on it. Come out here in about an hour and a half, we'll check it, because we are gonna turn it over and let it have equal smoking time on both sides. Now down there on the end that has the bacon, I have one side of them little vents open. On this other one, I just barely got her cracked. I just want to get a little airflow to where it's running that smoke right down there to it. We'll keep an eye on the temp, but we'll always keep an eye on the time. Well, at an hour and a half, I done snuck out here. Wasn't nobody watching but me. And I then opened it up, flipped the bacon over, 
added me just a few more little pieces of apple wood and cranked the grill up half as much more. I mean, that's all the heat we started out with, but I wanted to raise them coals up to where I had a little more heat. Now, if you're cooking this on something that you can maintain that constant heat, you won't have to raise that grill or get your heat unlevel one way or the other. But we're gonna let it go a total of three hours, and that's what it went, folks. And we're gonna check that internal temp. I'm looking from somewhere 140 to 150, so I have a probe. Let's see what happens. Oh, and ain't it a pretty looking little hog in there? So right down here in the thickest part of this, right in the middle, let's go ahead and see what happens. Look at here, we're at 141. So folks, at that time, we have smoke cured this bacon. Now remember the salt mixture that we had in there to start out with helped get some of that moisture out of there, but the smoke and that other flavors that went ahead and got in there, look at that, I mean, I could just bite on into that right now and have breakfast. Remember that wire rack we had to start out with? We're gonna put that bacon on there, take it in there to the house and let it cool for at least an hour. And then I'm gonna put me a little wrapping over it, place it in the ice box, and I like to let it set for at least four hours, but I prefer overnight. Seems like you get some more of that penetration of that smoke down in there, and it slices a whole lot better cold than it does warm. Well, it chilled four hours, it did. I prefer to go overnight, but the beagle and all the pups was hungry, and we're gonna see. Now, I want you to look. The grain of this is running that direction, right? So we always slice against the grain, but I'm gonna go ahead and square this up, and don't think, folks, that this is gonna go to waste. If I was to stew, have me some pot of beans or green beans or something like that that I needed a piece of big old piece of bacon in there, hey, them chunks will fit right in there. They will, but today, folks, Seeing as I've had this really good help, come on helpers, big is first, there's the Duke, and we babysitting Waylon today, so we got extra help. Where's Maggie? She's over chewing on a leather glove. She'd rather have it as bacon, but I will go ahead and just square this end up. Looks like hog meat to me, big. It looks like the best piece of bacon I ever seen come out of a package or a store and we done made it at home and y'all can too, it is that simple. Just make sure you let it cool at least four, but if you want added flavor, let it sit overnight. It makes a big difference, but ain't but one way to find out how this is and that's throw it in this field skillet right over here that's been heating up. I love to hear that sound of bacon frying any time of day. Well, bacon it is. Praise the Lord, pasta biscuits. I'm gonna put 12 pound of bacon on each one. And it makes me do the wavy bacon dance it does. Mm. Folks, that is better than any store-bought bacon you can find. Mm. So easy to do and so good. And I've got all these participants. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> easy now, wait my turn, and another turn, and, and that's it. Get lost, all of you. We hope you enjoyed this episode on making some bacon, because we sure did, and it's easy, folks, you can do it. All you got to do is pick you up one of them pork bellies and get after it. As always, we thank you so much for watching, and I tip my hat to all our service men and women and veterans who have kept this old country safe and that flag flying wherever me and Shan's at. God bless you each and every one. To the rest of y'all, hey, and everybody else, keep an eye out on that community tab. You didn't know we had one? Yeah, you just scroll over, hit the community tab, and there's some stuff there because the new book is coming out, remember? But we're going to do a live feature where we're going to have a cook-along. Yep, I'm going to give y'all some grocery list. Y'all going to get to go buy it, and we're going to cook together. Oh, whoo, it is going to be a party time it is. Remember, everything you need to know will be down there in the little description and the link below. Be sure you like, share, and subscribe the videos. We have a shout out, and I get a lot of y'all, and I am so proud of our EMTs, firemen, paramedics, policemen, everybody that keeps us safe. And these folks are from the Madison Township Fire Department, Station 31. Thank you all for watching these videos, and we hope you like our cooking. And folks, we've had a, a, a fellow that's been watching for a long time and he's going through some difficult times with cancer and I lift him up to you and ask you to pray for him and that is my friend Craig Lee. He's been a long time watcher. So 
Lift them folks up. Be proud of everybody you got in your community. And let's bring it all in here for a hug. And I'll see you down the Macon Bacon Trail. It is a hey, quiet on the set. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode on how we be making it. I mean, bacon is a fighting word here, folks. You don't never get enough, okay? Kent, what's in the marinade? There's some brown sugar in there. I can't remember what's in it. I ain't got the paper. <laughs> Woo-wee.